Hey folks, Quill18 here with another try at the recording. Sounds like the audio might have screwed up when I started the local recording. We're going to cross our fingers and hope this works again. Uh, so I am here again with my, my darling wife, Essentia. We're hey. going to be taking on the mystery of Laura Bow and the Dagger of Amon Ra. This is the second of four live streams for charity that we are doing. We are trying to save the world and improve things for people in need. And we have just raised over $2,000 now for oh. our charity. Uh, looks like... Looks like everything is fixed and is going awesome. So for those of you who are watching after the fact on YouTube, there's going to be a little bit of that. We're going to look over here from time to time, check the stream. Or, or over here. Or over there. <laughs> so we're going to be trying to answer questions yeah. as we go, which is going to be interesting and challenging because we are also trying to use our brains to solve some mysteries. So, and this is actually going to be even harder than King's Quest. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely harder. Especially harder than the first one. I mean, I think King's Quest got a little more difficult as the series went on, but... Yeah, this is I, trickier. I think it got a little less stupid and random. Part of yeah, my complaint maybe. <laughs> still with the original King's Quest is there was a lot of kind of like just random stuff you couldn't really, like, yeah. really, like I have to go in and out of the screen a few times to wait for this yeah. sort of thing to happen. And I don't know, it just seems odd, but. Um, all right. So, looks like everything is going well, so let's get started. I think we'll play the introduction. I'm not, I'm not sure if the introduction has the important bits or not, or if it's just like logos, but we'll give it a try. It's got some important bits as, as far as I remember. It's been a while. And let me change the sound settings to work like this, and then we'll give it a go. Gotta love that music. <laughs> it's creepy, you know? It's scary sounding. Yeah, it's creepy because it's middies. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. I actually pulled a page of 1920s slang. I'm going to try to use it as much as possible Very here. Nice. <laughs> Created Vecker. Bill Davis! Oh, I totally know that guy. We're buddies. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And he's going to guess on your next live stream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bill Davis. In fact, you know what I should do? I should see if I can contact Ken and Roberta Williams. Oh, that'd be and so be cool. Like, Listen, guys, <laughs> we're playing through all your games. I know you guys are like older now and on your like ship all the time they have a like a yacht like a sailboat oh that and they're must be nice. always out on their sailboat oh, oh i need to speed up the simulation time <laughs> do, 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 do. oh yes this is kind of an important scene is it as far as i ah! remember wake up wake up you're in trouble someone's here to kill you oh my god you didn't wake up what am i going to do now It's Bruce Balfour did it. Obviously, that's what they're telling us. Or see the dead guy in the trunk. <laughs> oh, we'll find out. Yeah, game over. We've already lost. We're dead. We're wearing good hats for this. Hey, I picked out mine very, very carefully. Got my little 1920s pseudo cloche going on. Voice acting! Stay out of my way, or I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. In second thought, the first guy's pretty good. You can find a way to accommodate everybody's wishes. Who are you There's to tell me, me what I can do with my own property? Your property? What authority did you have? The authority of the Egyptian Antiquities Service. So if you don't like it, I suggest you waddle on back to Egypt and complain to your own government. Own government. Would it not be better to work this out diplomatically? This isn't a case for diplomacy. Come on, Egyptian artifacts don't belong in Egypt. Everyone knows that. Of the situation. It is not just my acceptance that you should Mr. Carter. Sorry. My right comments do what you do. People are quite upset. Move to take drastic measures that need be. Drastic measures. Are you threatening? He's clearly me, Egyptian, Malibre can't you tell? Man? Yeah. Mr. Carter, there He's are simple some men. Would rather fight back than guy has really red, red lips. Yes. yes, he does. Any fat savage who lays a finger on my exhibit or threatens <laughs> me will find himself in deep so trouble. Cut him right now! <laughs> I make myself clear. <laughs> As clear as the water of the oasis, Mr. Carter. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. Okay, listen. If this Mr. Carter guy dies, he's got it coming at this point. <laughs> I actually don't remember who dies. There are deaths. That yeah. I recall. <laughs> I 
So we still don't know who the dead guy is or who killed him and why. Mm. Be careful with that steamer trunk, young man. It's exceedingly valuable. It's got a dead guy in it. It sure is heavy, Mr. Carrington. I like you Steve. Got gold bars in here or something? <laughs> he's doofy, but he's sweet. I'm not your concern. Now be a good lad and take it to my taxi. Ah, but it's such a dead weight. Ah, uh -huh. hilarious. I love the music, though. Yeah, me too. The music is one of the best parts. So if you ever want to play through the game yourself, you've got to make sure you get the CD-ROM version, which yes. has all the voice acting and music. Very important. Are you sure you've got everything? Colonel Sanders! Yes, Commander Toad, this game is racist, but it's equal opportunity racist. It's racist yes, against yes. everybody. <laughs> you got the money I gave you? Yes, Daddy. Don't worry. Put some money in your shoes. New York's a big city, and there's a lot of crime there. Look, I'm going straight to the paper. Who could possibly go wrong? Let me give you a little more money, just in case. Her daddy's so sweet. <laughs> Godspeed, Lord. Call me as soon as you get there. Why? Music's loud. Yeah, it is. Someone's saying, why is everyone cross-eyed in this? It, have you seen the quality of the graphics? It's kind of the best they could do. It's still one of those games where when you set it up, you've got the option of running it in like black and white mode, or four color mode, or 16 <laughs> mode. We're going all the way up to 256 colors, baby. Wow. Fancy. There's that Bruce Balfour guy again! <laughs> he's Colonel Sanders, too. Yes, he's very popular. He does everything. People are still asking how we met. Yeah, I think they're not paying attention because I'm pretty sure about four people have answered that in the chat. Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we. Someone said described it as like a, a role playing club together, basically, a, basically. Vamp a vampire the masquerade <laughs> role playing game sort of group, and uh, we happened to join on the same night, and that was it. Started talking, and a few months later we were dating. Here, are you a secretary? Actually, I'm starting a new job as a reporter. That's right. I'm not a secretary. What are you? Sexist? <laughs> All women have red hair. Of course. Laura Bow. How nice. I'm Well, to be fair. Ermagard! She's Ermagard! A lot of women in certain southern states do have red hair. Whole Cajun thing. Yeah, I gotta turn down the music and turn up the voices or something. Yeah. You can't hear the characters, yeah. She's saying that, like, you know, it's her first time on a train, and the other lady's saying, like, oh yeah, I remember my first time there, and I stepped off the train and I got mugged. It's awful. Yeah. Thank you, dear. You're very kind. I enjoy traveling with you. Ah! Our suitcase! This scene bothers me every time. Come on, Laura Bo. No, Pay attention. I'll be fine. Thank you. You're sure you'll be okay? <laughs> yes, thank you. Goodbye. If it weren't for that lady. Yeah. Goodness gracious. <clears throat> my suitcase. My suitcase! Certainly, sir. I'm always glad to see you. Fortunate. Fortunate. Oh, well, that's just PG. Give me all your money then. <laughs> Excuse me. Hand it over. A little too willing to help, lady. Oh, I need to bring up my other speaker one second. New York, kid. Poor Laura. <gasps> oh, yeah. Other speakers might help us here. Laura Bo has arrived. <laughs> I love her. She's so just gosh darn positive all the time. It is. So, I mean, it's a long intro, but it does set the theme very well. Yeah. You know, they tried to go with a very cinematic kind of story game. You know, you're, you're getting a sense of, um, I don't know, like, uh, like an Agatha Christie kind of thing, or... Kind of. Nothing can stop me now. Nothing can stop me now. Well, gosh darn... Father, 
John Bow. Ah, oh, John Bow's dog. Now I remember. How is he? He's fine, and he says hello. He wanted to know if you still had that newspaper clipping on your wall about the explosion of the Hindenburg building in New Orleans. Yes. Wait, she says New Orleans kills me. on the scene of the explosion, and he let me into the wreckage so I could cover it for the paper. I rescued Rupert Hindenburg from the burning office, wrote about it, and made a name for myself in the reporter. I owe John a lot for that. Backstory for a character who will never show up again. <laughs> this is the second Laura Bow game. Yeah. I'll he played a bigger role, son. apparently, in the first one. Usually Not that I've ever seen the first one. <laughs> at all. <laughs> Why? <laughs> She's kind of small. I can you missed do it, it. Mr. Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Just give me a chance. Yeah. Some people are having stream problems, but other people are fine. Yeah. Thank you, sir. For your first assignment, I want you to write about a burglary. Some kind of uh, fancy knife was stolen from the Lion Decker Museum. Oh, Lion Decker. It's in the fundraiser at 7 o'clock tonight for the new Egyptian exhibit. Everyone will be there. Tell them you're covering the society news so they won't clam up on you. Alright, that's, that's our quest. I love that line. Every time. <laughs> Alright. No pressure. So, the main story, yeah, is that some dagger, the dagger of Amun-Ra, was stolen at this museum. It just disappeared. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go and investigate that. That's some big, you know, fancy schmancy society yeah. stuff. <laughs> Turn the voice up. Yeah. Laura yeah. There's a little more. Laura Almost Bowser. to the point where we can do and that. I believe you have the advantage. Crotfaller Rhubarb, ma'am. So you can call me Rube. So I suppose you've already met Sam. Yes, he's very colorful. Yes, the entire museum just Don't let him shake you. He's tough on the outside, but inside, he's got a heart of stone. I'm sure he... Yeah. Pardon me? <laughs> what did you say? Never mind. Just pulling your leg. Why don't you take this desk right here, and we'll get you settled in. That's very kind of you. Mr. Augustini sort of left me on my own. I have to start on this story about a burglary at the Lion Decker Museum. All right. So, let me change some settings here. Um, oh, there's only one volume. That's unfortunate. But I mean, we could change the speech or to text mode so people could just read things, but then you'd lose all the awesome voice acting. Yeah. We may just have to deal. <laughs> there was a question I'd noticed earlier, but somebody in the game was talking, and I wanted to remember what the question was. Now, oh, they wanted to know. What uh, clans we played, and I thought it was funny because someone j guessed uh -huh. that you were a Tremere and I was a Toreador. Which is kind of funny because you were actually the Toreador when we met. That's right. <laughs> and I was Gangrel. Although, you do love to a Tremere. And I have played a Tremere. Very much. And I have also played a Toreador later on. <laughs> We've also played Bruja. Yes, I loved our Bruja. And then, I did, uh, I did play a Malkavian once as well. I mean, that was just That's a one-shot right. sort of weekend game. Right, yeah. But, yeah. He was awesome because it was this, I don't know, too I, much to talk about, but. Was my girl, I played a character that I can't remember if she was Malkav or not. She was a little loopy, she might have been. I can't remember what her claim was. That's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, a great, great game, great mm -hmm. setting, all sorts of great stuff. All right. Yes, so, gang growl. Why are you so, like, shocked? <laughs> I don't know, it's like, she's into wolves and things. I am. All right. So, um, <coughs> let's check her inventory. So we have a notebook. And we can always we can uh, look at the notebook. This is an interesting approach. It serves no practical purpose other than your temporary amusement. I love the the, com the computer voice, whatever the game narrator. So we have a notebook, and as we find out topics, and this will be reminiscent of people who have played certain games like Morrowind or I I don't know lots of different things. Mm -hmm. As we find out topics, they will be added to our booklet, and then we can ask people about these different things, give them all kinds of questions and things like that. 
I believe you can click on them now too and she'll kind of talk about whatever she knows. I, I thought. Oh, maybe not. I thought there was a way that you could do something like that. I don't it's know. It's been a while. So we can walk around. Ooh, speed this up here. Um, and we can look at things. Oh, we got another no donation, Ava saying. Crowdfollow Thank you. Rube Rhubarb is one of the trip's top writers. Among other things, he's in charge of writing obituaries, yet he's also extremely cheerful. I guess you gotta be cheerful to sort of counteract what you're doing for a living. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we can talk to him. I hope I'm not intruding. I mean, if you were working on the burglary story... Miss Bo, please, it is not a problem. Yes, I've started work on the story, but it's not your fault that it's been reassigned. That's just something I'll have to take up with Sam. Not that he's bitter. Thank no. you, Mr. Crog. Not at all. I mean, rude. Rude. Okay, I'm confused. Someone's yeah. saying that they're sitting there waiting for the stream to begin. But, um, hi, yeah. we're streaming. <laughs> YouTube madness begins. I know this. This is Professor X's like far less interesting, successful brother. <laughs> That's an interesting way to. So the, it. the other thing we can do is use the question mark to ask him questions based on things in our book. So, for example, we could ask him about the Lydekin Museum, which is where the theft happened. Which sounds like a good place to start. Is there anything I should know about the Lion Decker Museum? Lion Decker. Yeah, I went down there. Yeah, Lydecker's I did actual get that museum. <laughs> the investigation, at least. I met the museum's president, a stodgy old croaker named Archibald Carrington III. Cagey guy. Didn't seem overly concerned about the dagger. You might see if you can That's get suspicious. a little bit more out of mm -hmm. it. I also spoke with a Pippin Carter. Nasty little squirt. He acts like the world owes him a living. Apparently, he's the one who's originally discovered the dagger in Egypt, along with some of the other junk in the exhibit. Junk? Now, That's nice. Now, he was hot about the dagger. Took the whole thing like it was a personal stab at him. No pun intended. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions we want to ask? Oh, about? you're going to have such a blast with all the puns and the terrible, terrible jokes in this game, aren't you? I know we have to go to the police station early on. I don't know why, Anything though. I, should know about the police I don't remember all the station. details, either. I remember bits and pieces of all the different things, but not how they it's connect. It's standard procedure to check there at some point in any investigation. Okay. Sometimes they just blow smoke at you, you know, hand you the commissioner's party line. But once in a while, they'll give you something you can actually use. I think that'll probably be a good start before we go and investigate the place ourselves. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Which one was the... Is it Carrington that owns... Uh, I think Carrington runs I the think museum. So yeah, yeah, yes, because Dr. Pippin Carter is Egyptologist. Carrington. Carrington hasn't been in the states long. He's from England, but Gilbert. somehow he doesn't quite come off on the level. <laughs> Call me stupid. Okay, you're stupid. I should be more concerned <laughs> that seems about museum mean. property vanishing. His first month on the job too. Gilbert, come here. Do we want to ask him anything else? See, and this is why you don't want me playing the game. Because you would ask him everything. Uh huh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who's low fat? And low fat laundry. Well, these are. This is his notes, Give right? So. Low fat. Oh, that's right. That's why I ask the him old everything. laundry guy. What's the tell? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert, come here. Nobody can see you. Detective O'Reilly. I know he's assigned to the case. I didn't get anything out of him. Maybe you'll have better luck being a lady and all. Oi. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to ask him about the, uh... Oh. Actually, it's his notebook, I suppose. It is. <laughs> what should I do with this notebook? You're a reporter, for heaven's sake. Surely you know to take notes. No, I'm stupid. But why does it have all these notes already in it? Because that was my notebook. 
And I was taking notes in it for the burglary investigation. He seems offended. It's your notebook now. <laughs> and I don't care to discuss it anymore. Ooh. Yeah, alright. Um. Gilbert, why are you leaving? Come here. Are you able to get any leads at all about the burglary at the museum? No, haven't been working on the story very long. I went to see Detective O'Reilly down at the police station, but he was pretty tight lipped. I was planning on talking to Ziggy down at the speakeasy. He's a stoolie, usually good for a tidbit or two. There's some info. Any other leads I can follow up on? With due respect, ma'am, it's going to be your byline on the story, <laughs> not mine. Point taken, Mr. Crod for <laughs> Rube. She can just never remember to call him Rube. <clears throat> what year is it? I have a feeling 1926 is going to be a great year, don't you? Yeah. You ever try writing obituaries for a living? <laughs> Hardly a jolly way to spend a year. Yeah. All right. I'm going to check out our desk. Guys, I'm trying to get Gilbert this on the screen. He's not cooperating. Desk. It's very old and looks like it hasn't been cleaned thoroughly in years, but it's sturdy and serviceable. It's, it's disgusting, but it's sturdy. It's the ever had as an official member of the fourth estate. She's just... Oh my. So... It looks like an old so, so. desk blotter. <clears throat> this is the top drawer of your desk. The desk drawer is locked. Of course it is. I do remember you already have something to do here. Pencils. Me too. Okay. <laughs> Pull up a corner of the blotter to reveal a small key. You pick it up and place it in your purse. I mean, it's not like particularly that. hard to figure out that yeah. maybe there's a key hidden here. Yeah. You unlock the drawer. Unfortunately, the key permanently jams itself in the lock. Shucks. Of course it does. You never want to lock this drawer again. <laughs> You pick it up and place it in your purse. <laughs> she says that for everything. It's so funny. Gets annoying press occasionally. Pass. Oh, press pass. Reads, press your <laughs> pants while you wait. <laughs> Low fats Chinese laundry, fifty eight fifty eight Broadway Avenue, New York. I love that. Your press pass. Yeah. Hi, Gilbert. You okay, buddy? He's all riled up about something. Yeah. I'm wondering if I should let him upstairs. Let me do that. I have to take Salem up to protect him. Protect her, I mean. Her. <laughs> What's up, buddy? No, you don't want to go upstairs at all. Let's just get you on screen then. He's just riled up. Come here. He doesn't seem to want to be on screen because he doesn't seem to want to be held, but I think he's trying to get cool to chase him. He likes to play chase. <clears throat> hey, Boog. Look, your fans yeah, are online. Like <laughs> I'm going to put him in the bathroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're putting Gilbert upstairs for a while. He's kind of crazy at the moment. We'll try to bring him back later. <laughs> Hail Gilbert, yes. Oh, I hate being left on screen by myself. <clears throat> Gilbert's not going to smite anybody for insolence. He gets snarky sometimes, but he's not that evil. Gilbert's not evil. Someone said he's gonna smite people for their insolence or something. Oh it's well, that could happen. Not that bad. <laughs> You're welcome, Commander Toad. His sister's been wanting to see G Gilbert for a while. Ah. <clears throat> One notice reads: When covering the king of events such as embassy parties, please dress appropriately. We've had complaints about reporters who refuse to dress properly at social events. Actually, if you guys can wait two minutes, I'm going to take a short break. We'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. And we have cookies. And I don't know what I did in my hat. Oh, it's way over there. That's okay, I can go hatless for a little while. Um, Product placement. Terrible. Yeah. So terrible. This this show has been sponsored by cookies. <laughs> by cookies, yes. Mm, cookies. Just cookies. Is there anything we can do on this sheet? I don't remember. I think we're more or less done in this room. You don't know where it's feet. Don't touch it. It's gross. Can we go in the men's room? Don't touch it. You can't go in there. That's the men's lounge. Men's lounge. Around curiously, but there's no sign of a ladies' lounge. Well, lounges. Is patently unfair. <laughs> lounges is a more, you know, PC, more civilized uh, term than bathroom, washroom, whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> this place is sexist. There's like no assumption of having women. Totally. Yeah. Situated next to the desk. <coughs> you find a curiously heavy object in the trash. You pick it up. What do we need a baseball for? And how did she not recognize it as a baseball? <laughs> That's the part that kills me. This is now your curiously game. heavy object. Yeah. It's very old and looks. It's a ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we can't actually get to. Um, the other drawers down here. I'm so excited to be a member of the Trib staff. There. After all, I studied journalism in college. I went to Tulane and never thought that my first job out of school would be at a paper as prestigious as this one. <laughs> I mean, that is unusual, isn't it? I'm sorry, were you talking to me? <laughs> Never mind. Oh, boys. <laughs> Alright, let, let's get out of here. Shall I ask? There's semi-sweet chocolate chips, I checked. <laughs> Ooh. Quilla's hatless. 